for the last section of this class as we move on to local governments, I would like to compare my home county of Duval with the county that most of you live in, Alachua County. So let's start with Alachua County. You're going to have a separate county government from the different city governments. So you have a county council, and in Alachua it's made up of five at-large elected members. When I say at large, that means that the entire county votes for them, not just divided into little segments. So you have those five elected members of the county council, and those five members will appoint a county manager. So you don't elect your county manager. Aside from that, you'll also have an elected sheriff. The sheriff is in charge only of the county police. You also will separately have city polices for the different cities, and the chief of police there will not be elected. The cities, or municipalities, each have their own local governments, their own city councils. This includes Gainesville. And they will have their own local police force. The police chief of those police forces will be appointed typically by the elected mayor. So you have two separate police forces there, city police and county police. Furthermore, each county in Florida will elect a property appraiser and a tax collector. It's important that we keep the two separate. The tax collector, that, it's pretty self-explanatory. Their job is to collect the taxes and they also run the DMVs. The property appraiser, what they do is they decide the value of the property for tax purposes. You can see why we keep them separate. The idea is the person who decides how much can be taxed is not the same person collecting taxes. Have I mentioned before that in Florida how much we hate taxes? So we have those two rules um, separate. We elect them both in every county in Florida. And Alachua County as a whole is made up of a lot of different municipalities and you even have some that cross county lines. So Alachua County can be rather complicated. Um, as far as the culture of Alachua County goes, um, it's pretty diverse. It's made up of a lot of different people of different races, different religions, different backgrounds. I have noticed a pretty large Hispanic population in Alachua County. And as you might expect, a very large student population because you have the University of Florida. And then, of course, we have Santa Fe College where about half the students are trying to get into the University of Florida. Hopefully I can help some of you out with that. So that's Alachua County. Let's move on now to Duval County. Duval County slash Jacksonville is consolidated, meaning that the county and city are pretty much one and the same. So we have our elected mayor of Jacksonville. He is also the equivalent of the county manager for all of Duval County. We have our elected city council in Jacksonville. It's the same thing as the county council. They're one and the same. Uh, Duval County as a whole is made up of Jacksonville, which used to be a lot of smaller towns. And it also includes a little town called Baldwin, and it includes the three beaches, Jacksonville Beach, Atlantic Beach, and Neptune Beach. It does not include Ponte Vedra Beach, by the way. That is part of St. John's County. Those three beaches and Baldwin are a little bit autonomous. They do actually have their own elected mayors and their own little city councils, but at the same time, they're part of Duval County. So they get to also have representation in the Duval County slash Jacksonville City Council. Furthermore, they do get to vote also for the mayor of Jacksonville. But keep in mind that their local governments must answer also to the mayor of Jacksonville. Furthermore, when it comes to the police, nearly all of the police answer to the same person, that is the sheriff of Jacksonville. This also includes Baldwin. The one exception would be the three beaches. They have maintained a certain amount of autonomy and they like having their local police. It's mainly because they're rather speed ticket happy. So if you drive through the beaches, uh, better watch those speed limits and they change a lot. But other than collecting speeding fines, we have our county police slash Jacksonville police to handle pretty much everything else, you know, catching criminals, the important stuff. So what this means is we elect our sheriff, all the police answer to the sheriff. That makes the police force a little more democratic than city police would be, say, in Gainesville, for example. Uh, 
Um, the mayor of Jacksonville actually is very powerful because he has a lot of power over the entire county. And he, by the way, has an absolute veto on the city council. Now, every county can set this up their own way, but with our mayor, he does need the council to pass things, but he can veto it absolutely, and there's no way for them to overturn him. Often what happens in practice is because the council members tend to be part-time, they're not paid that well, uh, they often just meet with the mayor and advise him, and he, for the most part, calls the shots. So our mayor, I don't want to use the term dictator, I mean, he is elected, and it's not like he has absolute power, but, you know, he, he's very powerful. He does largely call the shots in Jacksonville, so the mayor is going to be a very powerful leader in a consolidated government especially. The good news is he has almost no say over the police. They do answer to the sheriff, so it's not like our government is... It's not like there are no limits whatsoever. As for Jacksonville's culture, for the most part, it does look a lot like the rest of the South. Uh, you have, you know, you have a predominantly Caucasian population and then a significant minority of African Americans. And the city of Jacksonville, you, you can still see where segregation traditionally would have been. It's not as rigid as it used to be. But the north side of Jacksonville historically is an African-American part of Jacksonville. Uh, yes, there, there are a growing number of whites moving to the north side and, of course, blacks moving to other parts of Jacksonville. But I will tell you this, on the west side of Jacksonville, far on the west side, very rednecky. There are certain places where I would not advise a black person to go. I mean, you see a rundown little bar with a big Confederate battle flag, you might want to stay out of there. Yes, legally, they're not supposed to turn people away, but, you know, it's a pretty rough area, so I'm just giving you some good advice. Now, as far as the north side, um, some of the rougher areas, you know, known to be rather ghetto, they're the kind of areas that people like me would be advised not to go to. Now, maybe I'm just naive, but I've gone to areas like that and surprisingly didn't have any trouble. Now, I went during broad daylight, but... Nonetheless, I was able to go there, and people were generally nice to me, but yeah, I've been in some areas where I was the only white person there. Um, as I understand, Gainesville does have areas like that also, but it's definitely more diverse. Jacksonville's mostly black and white. The one exception would probably be the Bay Meadows area of Jacksonville. I've noticed that's rather diverse there. You get a lot of Hispanics, a lot of Indians, and it gets a little more interesting there. But... Jacksonville is also very Bible Belt, tends to be very socially conservative. Uh, we do have a strict adult entertainment code. Yes, there is such a thing as a strip club in Jacksonville, but the police watch them very closely. Yeah, I'm sure that's what they're doing. Well, you know, anyway, I do often hear strip clubs being busted because they broke the adult entertainment code, showed a little too much or whatever. Um, as you might expect, the culture of Gainesville is a little more liberal. Uh, usually when you have bigger churches with few people in attendance, that tells you you've got a more liberal area. When you got more, like, smaller churches and strip malls and they're packed to the brim with people, uh, you're in the Bible Belt. So Jacksonville's more Bible Belt, whereas Gainesville is more socially liberal. It's also very artsy. We do have one section of Jacksonville that's like that, the Riverside. That's the near west side as opposed to the rednecky part on the far west side. Um, the Riverside, very artsy, might look a little bit like parts of Gainesville, except we also have lots and lots of rivers, that's why we call it Riverside. But as a whole, uh, Jacksonville, you're pretty much in the south of Georgia, to tell you the truth. You're technically in Florida, but it feels much like Georgia. Whereas uh, Gainesville and Alachua County is rather unique, and that's mainly because of the University of Florida. Now, Duval County does have UNF, but it hasn't been around as long as UF. So it hasn't had as much of a cultural impact as the University of Florida has had on the Gainesville area. Well, I hope this has given you a pretty good idea of how local governments work in Florida. All counties in Florida fit one of those two descriptions, at least as far as the government structure goes. You've, you're either going to have the separate county government from the little municipalities, or you're going to have the consolidated system. And one more detail, by the way, um, school districts are almost always overlapping the counties. 
So there's no official link between the two, but Duval County also has the Duval School District, and it pretty much covers the same area. Same thing with Alachua. You're going to have the Alachua School District pretty much covers the same area. Good luck on the last exam, and I hope you've enjoyed the course. Oh, what a relief it is. What a relief.